Uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring on Coach Lynch. He is a author, keynote speaker, fitness expert, and owner of AWOL Fitness in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, he, I, I, I'm reading his book because he's, he's an author. Of the, one of his books is Prison from Prison to Prison to Prosperity, right? But I've read this before. He said that true transformation, true transformation can't happen without a renewal of the mind. So tonight, Coach Lynch is coming to renew us for 2023. Coach Lynch, thank you for coming. Appreciate taking your time out. Um, I you know, appreciate you all for having me. Thank you, thank you. We you know we talked we talked earlier this afternoon. So you know, tell us tell us a little about yourselves. Okay, um, is it is it Yin? What's uh Yin from right? Yeah, Yin. yeah, Yin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm from South Jersey. Ah, nice. Right across All the right. bridge from Philly. Uh, right. Cherry Hill. <laughs> yeah. So Willingboro, Burlington, Mount Holly. Okay. You know, the whole the whole Burlington County area. Um, you know, I'm from, from right there. Um, nice. we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so he, he talked about, he mentioned, uh, the name of one of my books is called prison of prosperity. Well, um, I actually have, um, I actually carved out quite, uh, a name and past being from that area. Um, in that area, I was the leader of an $8.3 million drug ring and, um, I literally uh, had the largest drug bust in county history uh, from that area. And that put me on a path to go to federal prison for 10 years. Um, while I was in prison for 10 years, I spent a year in solitary confinement. And during those times, I found out a lot about the mind and mindset. And I had to come up with my own personal transformation to make me a transformation specialist. So being as though I had to go through um, what I went through and be breaking down to broken down to the lowest um, point, you know, of my life, uh, which would a lot of people would like to say rock bottom. Well, rock bottom became the solid foundation in which I rebuilt, you know, my life. And a lot of times it's needed. Um, in the, the self-help or psychology world, we call this a C moment. And um, I had a C moment uh, when the, the handcuffs were put on me. And you know, I had to tell myself, this is not me. This is not who I was meant to be. And this is not how you'll remember me. And it made me realize that um, a change needed to happen no matter how hard, difficult, long, or, um, you know, just bad it was going to be, but a change was needed. Um, oftentimes, in order for us to change our mind, we have to, you know, go through something significant. Um, but I teach people now that you don't always have to wait until uh, things get flipped upside down or you have nothing else or nowhere else to go. Um, and I teach people how to uh, literally, um, uh, 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 take control over their destiny or train their brain to execute their vision um, from right where they are. So I'm gonna take you back to the very beginning. Um, had a lot of potential as a young, um, as, as a young person. Um, I was able to go to school, uh, to college in um, East Orange, New Jersey, uh, called Upsala College to play two sports. And uh, I was going to school to play football and basketball. and through a bunch of uh, introspective work and um, self-reflection, um, I realized uh, when I was in prison how I got there. I had to actually, you know, kind of think about some 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 really bad habits that were cultivated to get me to that point. After at one time being such a promising, you know, individual, uh, I, I reverse engineered. Uh, some of my downfall to um, a, a bad habit that was cultivated. Does everybody know? Um, I want to give everybody, if you're taking notes, I want to give you the definition of a habit um, that that I believe has helped me out um, along my journey. And a habit is when you've you've done something uh, so many times that your your body knows how to do it better than the mind. 
I'll say it again. I said, a habit is when you've done something so many times that your body knows how to do it better than the mind. So there's a lot of things that uh, we want to do in our life and we want to change in our life or we want to stop in our life or um, we just want to start in our life. And we can't seem to do it because of conditioning um, in our body and our mind. Uh, we know we shouldn't drink that. We know we shouldn't eat that. We know we shouldn't be up this late. We know we should wake up earlier. We know we should uh, maybe eat a little bit more healthy, but somehow we keep choosing the unhealthy option. Somehow we keep staying up late. Somehow we keep, you know, scrolling a little longer on our uh, social media. Somehow we keep putting the project off until the last minute. And it's because of the habits that we've conditioned within our body and our mind. I'll say it again. A habit is when you've done something so many times that your body knows how to do it better than your mind. So if you think about it, we actually lose some of our free will to bad habits. And I had to come to this conclusion after, you know, um, squandering my opportunity for, you know, um, higher education to uh, trade that in for uh, drug dealing. Um, so that bad habit, y'all, was me hitting the snooze button. So at nine or 10 years old, I cultivated a bad habit. And I used to ask my mom for 10 more minutes of sleep every single day. And the days that I wouldn't ask her, I would get my little brother to ask her so that, you know, she would say, no, you asked yesterday or something. I get the, my brother to ask and he would ask. She would continue to give it to us. So nine, 10 years old, all the way to 17. Guess what? When I got to college, my mom wasn't there to wake me up anymore. I cultivated a habit where I needed someone to wake me up and it just wasn't going to happen. I was then uh, uh, responsible for waking myself up. But after 10 years of conditioning and eight and seven, nine years of conditioning, I knew I was supposed to be in class. I knew I needed to wake up to go to class so that I could continue to get good grades so I could stay on the team and I could continue to get my education. But it just didn't happen. I started to come late to class. I started to miss the information. Um, you know, what happens when you miss 15 or 20 minutes of a, of a movie? You just feel like you're lost. You know, you feel like, you know, you want to change the channel or you want to get out of there, right? You're just like, maybe we'll start it over later. We'll, we'll watch it again another time, right? Well, this is what I did with class. And, you know, um, I tried to outsmart the system and drop the classes so they didn't affect my GPA. And I dropped too many classes and I was no longer a full-time student. I lost my housing, I lost my scholarships and I was kicked off campus. And then I had to go back, you know, into the environment in which I thought I had escaped in an environment where everybody was stealing, they were killing and they were dealing. And, um, you know, they, you, you're the sum of the five people that you hang around with the most. And it's just a testament to environment. We're all seeds, um, our thoughts are seeds. Um, our minds are gardens um, and our thoughts are seeds. We can grow flowers and we can grow weeds, right? And uh, being around, you know, people who, you know, sold drugs and um, weren't in school, um, I began to adopt and adapt to that new environment. And, you know, I always uh, did things right, but I wasn't always doing the right things. So even in that environment, I wind up becoming the best of the bad guys. I took all my, you know, skills and qualities and traits and characteristics into, you know, the new environment and the new thing that I was doing. And I wind up thriving, like I said, becoming uh, the leader of an $8.3 million drug ring. Um, you know, getting to prison, realizing, you know, after being able to take, you know, long, hard looks at how I got there, allowed me to come up with comprehensive uh approaches and ways and methods to um, help people change and transform. So I really, you know, looked at my life under a microscope and I strategically tried to figure out how I was, how I wanted my life to look. So it started from day one where before I even got my time, I wrote a letter to the judge and the people in the courtroom that came to my sentencing about how I would do my time and what my future would look like upon my release from prison. Now, in 
the personal development world and psychology and self-help world, that's an exercise called future pacing. You hear me? You could jot that down. It's an exercise called future pacing. And I literally mapped out my 10 year stay of uh, with the GPS coordinates of, you know, where I was going to, how I was going to, and why I was going to uh, be productive with the time that I had. Does that make sense? So with this is, here's a huge takeaway right here. Um, I realized that with um, a true transformation can't happen without a renewal of the mind and the body won't go nowhere. The mind won't tell it to go. I was on this, um, physical journey. I was on this health journey. I had just prior to going to prison, lost like 70 pounds. So I was a football player who, um, and basketball player who was always in shape. And then once I stopped playing because I was, wasn't in school anymore, I still had that appetite and I kept eating like I was still playing, but I wasn't playing anymore. And my metabolism slowed down and I gained a bunch of weight and almost got to about 300 pounds. So C moment, tried to play basketball, hurt myself, couldn't finish. Nobody knew me as the, you know, the, the, the guy who was the, one of the best basketball players in the county. They didn't know me for that anymore. They just knew me for a guy that was selling drugs and, you know, uh, looked like he never played basketball before in his life. And I told myself, this is not me. This is not who I've been to be. This is not how he remember me. I went on a journey, alpha male, flip on a switch, didn't know what I was doing, but I lost 70 pounds in six months fell in love with that process and said, hey, there's going to be a million other people that want to do what I just did and they're not going to know how to do it. So I just started to dive into, you know, this thing or fall in love to this thing with this thing that I was doing and seeing all these results from. And it, it was just something in my, in my life was changing. And then boom, I went to prison. Uh, but I continued on that journey. So while I was in prison, it literally allowed me to stay connected to personally developing um, just on the physical side. Um, it was pretty dope because it won, you know, it allowed me to, you know, pursue, you know, uh, um, to continue to read. And then, you know, you wanted to read other things when you, you get bored of just reading health related things and stuff like that. So I got a book, Mr. Lawrence. Um, one of the first books that I got when I was in the county jail, it was called um, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Anybody ever heard of that? All right, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. It's a 42 page uh, book, very small book. In order for me to get this book, I had to, uh, my father had to uh, photocopy it and um, send it in as like paperwork because in the county jail, they didn't allow us to get um, many books uh, from different manufacturers and things like that. Certain lists where you can only get things from. And this was a, a quick way to circumvent the system for me to get the material and the information so that I could, uh, you know, continue to stay in the right um, spirits, um, so to speak. Um, and got this book and it literally set me on uh, a, a spiritual and um, personal development journey um, where uh, psychology self-help is just thrust me into this world um, where, you know, I just wanted any and everything and information that I could get on this stuff. But during this time, I realized that um, with a mindset reset, I realized that um, self-control was uh, something that um, a lot of us lose when um, our outside world or circumstances uh, you know, get too heavy for us. And one of the quotes in this book from James Allen, he says, uh, circumstances don't make a man, they reveal him. Mm -hmm. All right. Circumstances don't make a man, they reveal him to himself. And if you can have self-control, then your circumstances or your environment won't get the best of you. So I'd already lost to the environment, um, you know, with allowing the environment to, turn me into something that that I wasn't right um so I began to realize that there were three things that I always had if you're taking notes I want you to jot this down there are three things that you personally are always in control of one is your attitude mm -hmm. two is your effort or your energy and three is your focus so I realized that um 
controlling my attitude was number one, right? Because your, your, your mood, um, there's, there's, there's things in your, in, your, in your environment or people that you come in contact with that, that mess with your mood. And if you hold a mood too long, it then is, it, it becomes an attitude. And an attitude uh, carried for a long period of time becomes your personality and your personality, you know, uh, turns into your personal reality. It, it, it's pretty dope. It's some pretty dope stuff. I don't want to confuse you too much, but um, knowing that you can shift your mood, uh, knowing that you can shift your mood at any given time will allow you um, to, to take control of that process so it doesn't, you know, carry over too long into your personal reality. That makes sense? So a quote that, you know, I like to, you know, kind of live my life by is life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond. And that helps me put self-control into perspective and it allows me to reset my mindset a, a lot of times. So you figure here I am in prison for 10 years. It's not the worst thing that, that has happened because I actually went to solitary confinement for a whole year. Now, understanding these principles are starting to allow me to control my environment, even when it's now confined to a six by nine for, you know, uh, more than 23 hours out of a day. Does that mean that makes sense? So understanding that, you know, there's three things that I always have control over, you know, um, I'm able to find a silver lining in, you know, some of my darkest days. That, that makes sense. Because, you know, where focus goes, energy flows. So you got your attitude, which throws off your focus. And then you got your focus, which, you know, then seeps into your energy or your effort. Some people give, you know, half effort because their focus is off. And it's because they have an attitude or they've been in a mood. Make sense? Now you're starting to realize why you can't give your all to certain things because you're not focusing on the task at hand based off of the the mood that you're in. So you, you say, you know what, man, I got to get ready for this call or I got to get ready to do this project. I'm not ready yet. Or I'm not, I got to get my mind right. Right. We all say these, you know, some of these things does that does, does that make any sense? Makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, go ahead. I, I'm sorry for rambling so long. I, I didn't mean to go too far <laughs> about that, but That's okay. I'm That's in prison okay. now. I mean, I'm in prison now. So now you know where the title prison of prosperity, you know, came from. And I had to then turn my, you know, figure out how I was going to get to the prosperity part, how I was going to come out and be successful. So when you looked at the forward, you said, man, I didn't even, you know, I'm taking notes on the forward. I literally had to start studying people who were in those circumstances that came out successful. So I studied people like Muhammad Ali went to prison. Um, Malcolm X went to prison, uh, Mandela went to prison, you know, Mike Tyson went to prison. I started to study, you know, some of these people that went to prison, but still came out to be, you know, great men and things like that. And that's why some of them are mentioned in the forward, but, but, but go ahead. So now, you know, you mentioned about prison, right? You mentioned about being in prison, being a prisoner. And I remember you saying something, so I don't remember part of the book, I've heard it. You said some people are, are, are in prison and then they're even jail. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. The now, blessing for me was the, that I was a part of the direct uh, the the Department of Corrections. Um, uh, the the blessing for me is that I was reduced to a number. It made number one two two eight two zero five zero. See, there's many people that are walking around here where uh, the definition of um, of of prison is something that is is restricted, um, or the definition of a shackle is, is something that you know restricts you. And if you think about your life, think about how many things actually, you know, restrict us. Some of us, um, our friends restrict us. The circles of influence that we have around us, they restrict us. Some of us, our families restrict us. So we're, we have mental prisons, emotional prisons. We have subconscious prisons. Uh, we, we, we really are unaware of. And the blessing for me was I was in a physical prison where I, like, I had a chance to know that I was in prison and I needed to change. Um, you know, I just had to change some things uh, because I did not like where I was. And 
you know, some of us, because we're um, bogged down with, um, you know, the mundane things of our everyday, you know, life, we, we, we don't even get a chance to do the self-reflections and to get the self-awareness so that we can then, you know, change things around in, in our self-concept. And I can get into that breakdown what self-concept is later on, but I'll let you, you know, ask me any question. Now, here's, here's, the, here, here's what I, I was reading the book, right? In, in chapter four and chapter five, right? Chapter four was self-love to define as discipline. But in chapter five, you said, you wrote that says self-love leads you to create discipline to keep yourself from certain things right what what what, what does self-love have to do with self-discipline and then how, what are certain things you talking about that's keeping people that will keep you from doing certain things or doing certain things and move you forward because these things certain things are moving you backwards and some things certain things move you forward yeah so when you when you hold yourself in high regard or high esteem or high value, then certain things aren't worthy of your presence, aren't worthy of your time, aren't worthy of your words, aren't worthy of your energy, aren't worthy of your effort. And if you understand what those, who you are and what those things um, are that are not parallel with who you are, then you will have discipline or restraints from actually partaking in them. So where there is no vision, the people throw off restraints. Where there is no vision, the people throw off discipline. Where there's no vision, the people uh, give their energy away. Where there's no vision, the people frivolously spend their money. Where there's no vision, there's no discipline. And where there's no discipline, the people perish. Mm. Got it? <laughs> the scripture says where there's no vision, the people will perish. But a lot of times we're just thinking that, oh, yeah, they're just talking about um, vision. But it all leads to the things that make us die a slow death or make us become in prison and we don't even know it. So the reason why we can't do certain things is because we've been spending so much that we don't have the credit because we've been swiping the card and now we can't freely, right? Go out and do the thing that we wanna do, right? Our goal in life is, you know, to have abundance and prosperity and we're just not surrounded with those things these days. So now you talked about discipline. I love what you wrote, you said, Discipline involves self-imposed standards for the sake of a higher goal, right? Um, that's dope, ain't it? <laughs> it is, it is, right? It's, that's, that's, that's hot, that's hot, right? And oh, then you said goals of worth and little temporary discomfort. So for 2023, right, what do people need to do that they did last year that they need to stop doing this year? And what can they, what can, what can, what, what temporary, you said temporary discomforts. What temporary discomforts can people let go of to get ahead for this year? Because that's uh, what, what I, 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 I believe that this year, 2023 is going to be everybody. This is going to be everybody's best year ever. Well, I'm going to give you three things that you can always use to reset your mindset. Okay. All right. You know, three things. And, and, and when I say reset your mindset, I'm talking about interrupting some of those patterns that, you know, um, uh, um, that we've been conditioned to do that have led us to the result that we don't want, right? And in psychology, we, we have to interrupt the pattern in order for us to kind of get back on track. So when we do interrupt it, it's going to be temporary discomfort because we usually are doing the thing that is more comfortable for us. And you know what they say about a comfort zone, it's a cool place to, to be, but nothing ever grows there, right? So if we can interrupt the pattern and get uncomfortable for a second, it, you know, it'll set us back on track to, you know, or the frequency that we need to be on to attract or, you know, get closer to, to, to that thing we're, we're looking for, right? Um, to that vision that we set out. So there's three things. Um, you know, we want to take control over, um, uh, we want to take control over our energy. Let's, let's call it energy. All right. Um, and, and, in science, we call it energy. In the streets, we call it a vibe. And in, in, in religion, we call it spirits. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, I need y'all to follow me. It's some dope, some dope stuff. <laughs> it's, it's pretty dope. All right. Um, but in order for us to do that, we gotta we we gotta be conscious of what we're um what what we're dumping into our our subconscious mind. We gotta actually be intentional about what's coming in and what's going out. And when that happens, we'll actually start to change our routines, our rituals, our systems, our uh, you know, the things that we're doing every day, the, the words that we're saying, you know, the, uh, the language that we're using. And this will then um, allow us to be uh, open to receive, you know, the guidance and the help we need from the, um, from the divine. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna give you three things and they're gonna start with A's, all right? One is words of affirmation. Two is having an attitude of gratitude. And three is the type of action that we're going to do each day because action changes things. All right. And I'll expound on all three of those. But one, I said, um, I said words of affirmation. And um, the reason why uh, words of affirmation are so important, um, because one it is the uh, it is the easiest and most efficient way to change or deprogram and reprogram your subconscious mind. So I'm not sure if you guys know or not, but your subconscious mind is responsible for 95% of your reality. In fact, our subconscious mind runs 95 is, 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 is runs 95% of what we do every single day. Everything we do is, is, is habitual and it's all comes from, you know, stuff that we've, we've been doing over and over and over again. Now, when you first wake up in the morning, your brain is operating on 9.5 to 10.5 wave cycles per second. And that's the frequency that your mind is on or needs to be on to produce spontaneous mental imagery. Have you guys ever seen someone um, get hypnotized? Oh, oh, you, you've seen it before, right? So, you know, they, they start, you, you know, swinging this pendulum and the person is getting lured into a state. And it's like the alpha to theta state. And as they fall deeper into the state, right, they're actually on these wave cycles. And they're right at that 9.5 to 10.5, and they're getting deeper. But as they're getting at that 9.5, and their conscious mind is still a little woke, the person who is, um, who's hypnotizing them, starts to say words um, of, well, you're going to bark like a dog, you're a dog now, or you're a monkey or whatever, you know, whatever it is, you've seen it before, right? Has anybody, anybody ever seen it before? Okay, so at that time, we're getting these words, but these words are associated with pictures. So if I asked you, the subconscious mind only works in pictures and it only has two primary functions. Two primary functions are to store and retrieve data, okay? So you have pictures in your subconscious mind that are associated with words. If I ask you all to close your eyes and say, you know, uh, don't think about your house or don't think about your car or don't think about your kids, the first thing you're going to think about is your house because the word house is, is, is associated with a picture that you frequent often. You see your house every single day, multiple times. So your subconscious mind is packed with the word house and the picture of the house. So you can only see what I said, even if I said, don't think about it. Subconscious mind doesn't process negatives. So I said, don't think about it. And you automatically thought about it because it's associated with the picture and it's in your subconscious mind and you can't outperform what is in your subconscious mind. So we don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our habits. So whatever's in our subconscious mind is eventually going to come out because it's, it's the habitual mind. You, you, you got it? We have to be intentional about reprogramming. That's what mindset reset is all about. Reprogram it so that the repetition then begins to exceed or supersede the old programming. So we put the new pictures in in the morning when we first wake up and right before we go to sleep. So if we can say words of affirmation at that time, as soon as we wake up and before we go to sleep, we're falling into this state right before we go to sleep, but we're telling ourselves the new story with the new pictures. 
the perfect pictures. I say today is the most magnificent day of my life. Health, wealth, happiness, and love, success, prosperity, and money come to me in great abundance. I say things like I have the health and strength to do it and get through it. I say things like um, uh, I am financially free. I am financially secure. I say things like I demonstrate my love for my family in infinite ways. I say things like amazing opportunities exist for me in every aspect of my life. Right? Like this, this is some pretty dope stuff. But I'm, I'm about to set the frequency for my day. I'm about to set the energy for my day. I'm about to set the spirit for my day. I'm about to set the frequency that sets the vibrations, other things that vibrate on this frequency to attract that to me. Does that make sense? So saying words of affirmation um, is, is vital to deprogram and reprogramming your subconscious mind. And if you want your reality to change, you have to be intentional about the things that you're telling yourself, the things that you're saying, and the words and pictures that are in your subconscious mind. So if you want one takeaway for the uh, words of affirmation is to use, pick five affirmations in different areas of your life. It may be health, finances, relationships, um, you know, uh, uh, career, whatever it is. I want you to get in affirmations in all these different areas of your life. And I want you to say these when you first wake up. Now, here's the dope part, Mr. Lawrence. I'm going to tell you how to make this a habit because sometimes we do something and then sometimes we don't. And the more often we do it, it becomes a habit and then it gets in our subconscious mind. So in order to make anything a habit, um, uh, Matt, any, in order to make anything a habit and to make it a habit faster, I want you to tie it to an existing habit. So what I do is I say these affirmations when I'm brushing my teeth. I've been brushing my teeth since I had one or since I was one, right? And I do it at the same time every day. Successful people do the same thing at the same time, the same way every day because they know it produces results. So in order for me to make something a habit, I need to do it the same time, the same way, the same place, same day, every day because I needed to get ingrained in my subconscious mind. Does that make sense? So I take my three by five index cards, I put them on the mirror right when I'm brushing my teeth. And as soon as I start brushing my teeth, it triggers me to say my words of affirmation at the most opportune time. This is the perfect way to reset your mindset for the morning. Make sense? Cool. Now, before I, um, uh, I get in the car and I go out and I'm getting ready to go to my gym, my first class is at five o'clock in the morning. Um, but I'm going to, I have a morning routine where I do fasted cardio, you know, all this different type of stuff. And I'll get to that and why I do that in a second. But while I'm uh, finishing that part of my routine up, I grab my phone. And um, I start to write down five things that I'm grateful for because this is where I get my attitude of gratitude. All right, everybody jot this down. Gratitude vibrates on 540 megahertz. So remember I talked about those wavelengths per, per second, right? Wave cycles per second. Now we're talking about 540 megahertz. So when you actually wake up in the, um, in the morning, the, uh, your normal body, it, it, it resonates uh, at a natural frequency, Mr. Lawrence, of uh, 62 to 75 megahertz. So, so check this out. You wake up in a state that's like 62 to 75. If you guys Google this, there's going to be words that are associated with that frequency. Like 75 is like grief. And um, fear is like 100. You wake up underneath fear. You, you wake up at 62 to 75. This is tough, y'all. Anger is 150. Anger vibrates at 150, y'all. So if we're not intentional about raising our frequency and vibration, we're going to naturally resonate in things like pride, anger, desire, fear. Think about all that stuff. <laughs> You wake up and you immediately go to your troubles, right? You don't feel like going to work or none of that stuff. You hit the snooze button first. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's pretty dope until you become consciously aware of the things that are spinning you in this cycle. Got me? So we got to be intentional about what did I say gr gratitude resonated on? What, what did I say it vibrated on? 540. 
So if you can write down five things that you're grateful for, you raise your vibration from 62 to 75 to 540. I see you over there Googling it. <laughs> y'all like, yo, this dude is dope. I spent 10 years in prison, y'all. I had a master's class. You feel me? I had to figure, I had to teach myself some stuff, how to resonate on a different frequency because I was surrounded by brick walls and steel doors, huh? Gorillas and killers. <laughs> and I had to make it out of there. So the cool part about this is that when you vibrate on these frequencies, you're, um, your, your, your consciousness expands. So I want you to think about like a cone, like a sphere or a cone. And the higher your vibration goes, the, high, the, the, the more open your, your consciousness gets. And if your consciousness gets open, you actually ascend to a level of ultimate consciousness. But the, the more open it gets, the more you can receive. The mind is like a parachute. It, don't, it only works when it's open. So if you if so if you wake up and 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 you're in fear, you're upset, just think about when you're when you're beefing with somebody. Just think about how when you're going back and forth with somebody and you're arguing with them, you don't want to hear nothing they have to say. That's a contracted consciousness. You're closed-minded at that time. Makes sense now, right? But when you're wide open, you're ready to receive everything that the universe has to offer. That's how you, you, you start to get connected to the third eye, to the subconscious mind, to the all knowing, the all seeing, the super conscious, all these different things where it's the gateway to, you know, the, the, the divine. And it's pretty dope. I don't want to get into all that, but uh, uh, we will uh, because you're going to have to bring me back for another call. But the attitude of gratitude stimulates serotonin, which actually um, activates, uh, activates the brain to produce dopamine. And dopamine is the happiness chemical or the happiness hormone so that you can now be producing happy feelings and chemicals within your body and mind. Remember, our goal is to make our body and mind one, right? But for the positive. Does that make sense? Now, we've, dopamine is, is, our, is our pleasure chemical. We're feeling good about our morning so far, all we did was brush our teeth, right? We brushed our teeth. And now, can you think about, can you think about how, how good you feel when you get a few wins? Right? So, so why do you think basketball players start with a layup line? To get the first They immediately win. feel success. Yeah, easy yeah. shot. <laughs> Absolutely. Easy wins, easy shots. You complete the, the stuff and you feel good because you're starting to produce and you get a chance to get a visual mental picture of success. The ball is going through the hoop. You've done it a few times and all a player really needs in a game is to make like two or three shots. And next thing you know, he's in a state of flow. They call it being on fire, right? Well, imagine if your action or your morning routine or your rituals allowed you to get into a state of flow by starting off with small wins or completing tasks. You actually would be producing the reward chemical, a uh, happy pleasure chemical of dopamine as soon as you wake up. So having a, a perfect day formula or a morning routine, you literally start to produce dopamine right from the rip. It's some dope stuff, y'all. You won't even get this in <laughs> master's class. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you thank me later. <laughs> so, so, so look, I get these small wins, right? By doing a couple um, self-care activities. So you can also stimulate dopamine from self-care activities. You know how you, you, you feel better when you get a haircut or you get your hair done? Don't, don't, don't you feel better when you get your, your nails done? You get a pedicure, you get your, you know, you, you get, your, get your feet done, you get your nails done, you feel a lot better, right? Mm -hmm. You do things for yourself, you feel better. That's, that's dopamine. But it comes from self-care activities. Write this down. Do so you ever want to change your state? Go get your hair done. You ever want to change your state? Did you ever see when you're depressed, you don't care about getting your hair done? Right? You don't care about what everybody thinks, stuff like that. You, you know what I'm talking about? Now, so now I'm giving you things now that can help you 
you know, reset your mindset so that you don't stay in that, that low vibration for, for so long. Makes sense now. Mm -hmm. All right, got it. Or we got to get somebody to drag us to, you know, help us do some of that stuff, right? We got to eat. You ever see people when they're in the low vibration, they don't want to eat. Look at some of us now, we're so busy, we don't even eat anymore. And you notice when it's time for us to eat, we go for pleasure foods because we get dopamine from sugar, from cookies. We get dopamine from, yeah. But if we start eating at the right times and the right things, we can interrupt that pattern so that we don't have to get dopamine from the cookie or the pizza or the coffee or the drug. We can actually produce it ourselves, And then we, mm. gain, we regain our free will. Remember I told you we were slowly losing our free will to our habits. It, it makes sense now, right? Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of people that get hooked on drugs because of the feeling, because they, they try to get dopamine and they got to get it from an outside chemical when you're actually producing, you can actually produce it yourself. It makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I was in solitary confinement, I didn't have to rely on medication to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear me? I took mm -hmm. the meditation. Got it? <laughs> Some people in my predicament chose medication. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, quiet is kept. The prison system is really not a rehabilitation, you know, center. So, you know, if, if, if they think you need medicine, they're going to medicate you real quick. It's all a business. They're going to give that to you, you know. But, you know, people like me, figure, you figure it out. Now I can help teach other people. So remember I told you I'd go do my fasting cardio? Well, the walk um, or the run or the swim or the bike ride actually produces serotonin. And serotonin is a mood stabilizer. So now that I feel good from the dopamine, I want to stabilize the mood. So my routine allows me to keep riding high or to fill my cup up first. Got it? Mm -hmm. I wake up at 2.38 every day because I beat, I'm at the gym at 3.30 so that I can fill my cup up, right? I can get my small wins in, get my day going because I have 10 employees and my first class is five o'clock. Somebody's gonna call out before five o'clock. Do I need them to affect my mood? Mood? leads to attitude, attitude leads to personality, personality leads to personal reality. I have to fill my cup up, get on a frequency that allow me to negate or combat that low energy or low frequency from the, the things that are all coming up, the forces that are coming up against me. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Now y'all like, wow, oh, dang, this guy, he's killed me. <laughs> hey, 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 Coach Lynch, mood, attitude, I like that one. That, no, that Mood, was attitude, personality, attitude. and mm -hmm. personal reality. Mood, attitude, so, personality. Personality and personal reality. See, if you embody a personality, uh, you know, it becomes your personal reality. They, they, look, the, the, you see my, uh, my name on the screen? Mm -hmm. What does it say? Coach Lynch. I'm a coach. Personality now is, is I have to coach. I have to set the tone. I have to actually um, help people get from where they are to where they want to be. You, you know, I have to be able to see things outside of the box that they can't see while they're playing. I have to be able to slow the game down. I have to be able to see the game um, a lot. A lot. Um, it comes a lot faster, easier to me because it's faster to other people. So I have to do so many different things just to get people to um, uh, change their perspective or to, to, to get open to receive some of this information, right? And it's all because, you know, I just believe I'm a coach. But it started from me, you know, introspective, reflection, you know, things like that, knowing that, uh, realizing that I was a captain to all my sports teams ever growing up. So uh, being a leader was something that basically was kind of um, ingrained in me. It was, you know, it became habitual. I was always the person who, who led the exercises, who said the pep rally speeches, and then, you know, even got um, enhanced in my case as a leader organizer. Um, so 
you know, um, all skills are transferable. You know, I didn't try to run from that stuff um, after I was incarcerated. I just had to embody those things and make them a part of my, um, you know, my personality moving forward as well. You're still a leader. You're still organizer. You know, you're still captain and you still have influence no matter um, what demographic you're, you're in. And you, you have to um, you have to embody that. So um, uh, so so then in my um, routine, um, I teach my first two classes. So I got a 5 a.m., a 6 a.m., a 7 a.m., an 8 a.m. I run these classes like clockwork because I scale my business and I have a couple gyms and all this different type of stuff. So and I got it down to a system because successful people do the same thing at the same time, the same way every day because they know it produces results. So in my business, I have to figure out ways for it to be scalable and to, to, to um, reproduce results and all this stuff, right? So I only teach the first two classes or maybe even the first one. But then I go home and I got a three-year-old baby, right? And I make sure that I take the baby. She just turned three. I take the baby to daycare. But one of the things that keeps driving me to run back and forth from the gym to home to make sure that I get the time with the baby is because oxytocin is stimulated, the love hormone. And if you play with a dog, if you play with the baby, if you hold hands, if you hug your family, if you give somebody a compliment, then you can produce oxytocin, which is the love hormone. So I got dopamine. I'm feeling good, right? I'm feeling happy. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm stabilizing that mood. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, I'm loving it. <laughs> you got it? Like, just the frequency that, that I'm resonating on every single day. And, um, you, you know, next thing you know, I come back at 9 o'clock and I do my own personal workout. I mean, I kill it. But you know what happens when I do that? I'm stimulating the endorphins. You know what endorphins are? They're painkillers. <laughs> you hear me? So whatever's bothering me, I feel better after I work out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. You always feel better when you get a little bit of exercise in. But you can also stimulate endorphins through, um, through laughing. That's why you always hear me, you know, tell a little something. And then I laugh a little bit because, you know, I got to get you. I got to wake you back up and get your endorphins going. Um, what else? Um, uh, you can watch a movie, uh, 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 a comedy. A comedy you know, from laughing, laughing and stuff like that, uh, it, it, it'll get you right. It, it'll have you, uh, have you stimulating those endorphins and stuff like that. Also dark chocolate, but I don't want you to go too far into dark chocolate because <laughs> you'll be trying to find a Snickers or something like that that it says, no, I'm getting my endorphins going or killing the pain and things like that. <laughs> dark chocolate, just a little bit. You can have a little bit. So anyway, just with this action, these actions that I'm talking about here, it helps me create my perfect day formula. All right, my perfect day formula has me resonating on the frequency that allows me to attract the things that I'm looking for in my life that coincide with my vision. Makes sense? As opposed to me, you know, go ahead, go ahead, big dog. I think Matt, Matt has a question. I did, yeah. you, I did have a quick question. You mentioned um, movies, comedy movies. What's your favorite comedy movie that you like, your go-to? Oh man. Um, um, I'm a little old school, not well, not old school, old school, but um, Eddie Murphy. I like Eddie Murphy coming to America, like trading places. Uh, yeah, I, I just like Eddie Murphy uh, from back in the day, man. I really, I really dig Eddie Murphy. I like him. He, he is awesome. Thank, thanks for that question. I appreciate, I appreciate yeah, sure. that. Yeah, let's open it up for some questions and stuff, man. So, anybody, somebody should have a question because I know I have a question. Okay, Beth. Yes. So, um, okay. So you're not the only person. Lots of people talk about, you know, they get up at 4.30 and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But if you're getting up at 2.30 every morning, does that mean you're going to bed at six o'clock at night? What time are you going and to sleep, how, coach? <laughs> I get this yeah. I mean, it's like, how do you, you know, we go back and forth, right? Because your body still requires rest. You have to actually rest, but how do you actually balance with, I know my body needs the rest and yet still accomplishing and doing it, you know, and like you said, getting out of that alarm clock mode issue and all of that. Yeah, um, the body won't go anywhere. The mind doesn't tell it to go. So, you know, you, you got to change the narrative first. So um, I'll ask Lawrence this because he, he's a black man. And then I'll have, have all of you um, Google it um, for yourselves. But Lawrence, what's the average life expectancy of a black man? Do you know? You got to unmute, Lawrence. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 66. Hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. 66. Now, 
the narrative that we've bought into is that um, we need eight hours of sleep, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, our day consists of 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Eight of 24 is a third. A third. Right. I'm going to sleep a third of my life. What's the third of 66? 22 years. 22. 20, 22 years. All right. Leaves me with 44 left to live, right? Now, I'm going to devote eight, nine, 10, 12 of that to my career. Let's just say eight, right? Mm-hmm. It's another third, right? Which leaves me left 22 years to get some stuff done. How long did I tell y'all I was in prison? 10. 10 years, which leaves me 12 years to get some stuff done. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were sleeping in prison too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm just out. saying all that to say, uh, uh, once Matt, yeah, once I point. got those, uh, what, no, 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 here, here it is. Here, here's the point. The point is this, um, that I had to change the narrative in my head about how many hours of sleep I actually need. So what'd okay. you change it to? Oh, uh, five. Oh. Five, five, five or six. Um, right. But, but, but check it out. Um, it doesn't come with without um, proving theories. You know, I'm not just pulling this out of my hiney hole. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, a sleep cycle consists of an hour and a half. And you'll get a lot of different people to talk a lot of different shit on it and everything. But a uh, sleep cycle is an hour and a half. Um, so I want to get, uh, I'm going to get a few sleep cycles in, right? I'm trying to get uh, six sleep. I'm going to try to get six hours of uh, sleep. Um, or close to it, right? Mm-hmm. And what I did was I break my day up into uh, four six-hour segments. And I, my first six hours is from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. And I have this checklist of stuff that has to get done that makes me super productive. So by 9 a.m., you guys are getting your first or second cup of coffee. I've done more than the average person in those six hours. Now the average person is going to work for eight hours and then they're going to fuck off after they get off work, right? This is what they're going to do. You you know what the average American does. They go to work when they're off work. There's no more work, right? They're going to watch TV. They're going to do whatever they need to do. This is, you know, what they do. But I have another six hour block after that, that is not as rigorous as the first six hours but there's a checklist of things that need to get done for me to be productive. Then I have a six hour block at the end that requires me to be a dad and a husband and to prepare for tomorrow and the next day. And then I have my six hour block of sleep. So I actually have like four days combined and compressed into one. And because I don't have long periods of unconsciousness throughout the day, I'm able to get, uh, you know, four days in one, it's kind of like the Kobe Bryant theory. It's, it's the reason how Kobe Bryant was able to wake up and get four or five practices in because he woke up earlier, he had a schedule to practice, a schedule to eat and rest, and then he went back to practice and he did it again. And he wound up getting four or five practices in as opposed to everybody's one. And over a five-year period of time, you become the top person in your field. So I'll have you all know that I have my own segment on the Good Morning Show um, here at WFMY News 2. It's a motivational um, segment where people write in their problems and I answer their problems in like a minute or less. But I live in a college town where there's, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colleges around here in this triad area. And there's so many people who have um, uh, degrees in exercise science and physiology, and they would love to have the resident fitness health and wellness expert, um, you know, of of the news and have that platform to pitch, you know, uh, to people and stuff like that. But because I do four or five days worth of stuff in one day, I hawked them all down, caught them and took all their opportunities because they get off work and then they fucking chill. They got the degree and then they chilled. Uh, they thought they were doing something and they were chilling. And I just look at life from a different, you know, lens. And um, I, I don't believe I have a lot of time to waste because, you know, um, I was, I was sitting somewhere, you know, behind a wall and, and behind a glass for, for quite some time. So, you know, just under um, reading, 
being knowledgeable, getting some science, and then proven theories. See if this stuff works for me, if it works for my body, if it works for my life, if it fits in my schedule. You know, my stuff is not gospel for everybody, but it's gospel for me. It's the truth for me. And, you know, it, it, on the weekend, I, I'm actually able to sleep a little bit longer. So if I'm deprived in any form or fashion, I actually get a chance to fill that cup or that tank up, uh, which is pretty dope. Um, and, 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 I, and, and I don't, I manage that pretty well to where I know that it's a Friday and I'm not staying up all night because it's Friday. I'm actually going to sleep and getting some rest because um, Monday through Friday is really, really tough for me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I got 17 books. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's just pretty dope, uh, the things that I do uh, um, with the time that I have. And it's, it's because my mindset is different. I approach everything totally different than everybody. Um, and and um, it's because of level of level of consciousness. And I'm, I'm, you know, continuously trying to ascend to another level of consciousness um, each and every day and trying to get better. Yeah. I mean, if you guys are okay, there's something, uh, something that really clicked when uh, Bethany asked that question and something you mentioned earlier, Coach Lynn, it's like trying to embody those that you, you want to be, right? Um, if we ask like people who we all know, like Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, things that people that are successful, Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? They always say that, you know, they don't really sleep. They don't sleep things. And these were questions that I came across, you know, when I was on this path to improve upon myself. Like, I want to embody people who I want to be, right? As a kid, we always wanted to be superheroes. And that was something I believe was talked. I forgot which Zoom session, but, you know, you want to become, you want to embody somebody that you aspire to be. And, you know, I, uh, Bethany, I totally agree with you. I've, I, I studied, I, I have my bachelor's and my master's. I've read all the studies about getting eight hours of sleep, improving the mind and stuff like that. But I don't remember those people. I remember people who were like, <laughs> uh, I don't get enough sleep. Um, I, I, I've been working through my life. Um, I, I, I hope I get some sleep throughout the week, but you know what? It's fine. You know, there's, uh, I joined the military at one point I was considering it and, um, I, I got talked out of it, but regardless of the point, there's this part in the Marine Corps where they have hell week. If these guys can do a full week of no sleep doing physical training and then do the same thing again for the rest of two, three years or however long their contract is. Who am I to say I can't, I need my eight hours of sleep or else I won't function for the day. Like you remember all these successful people that, you know, gave up sleep to be successful. I mean, I mean, everyone has their own path, how they want to achieve it. But I definitely resonate with how you said it, Coach Lynn. It's like you embody people and what they do. I, I, I try to surpass them in a sense that, okay, you know, for them to do this, if they're going to six hours of sleep, I'm going to get five hours of sleep and get more hour and get that extra hour doing something more productive that way. I mean, it's just putting all together and you kind of start clicking when you join these like coaching sessions and mindful sessions and mastermind sessions. And that's kind of where I'm like, okay, it, it's not just for show. These people are actually success. They have proof behind it versus that doctor that wrote the study that eight hours of sleep is good for you, even though I'm, I don't even remember him. I just read it somewhere so long ago. So that I just want to put that um, two cent in there. No, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Like, so you actually, um, there's a different way to look at it too. You, you could actually say, and you could actually say, I'm gaining you know, a third of my life back or, you know, something like there's mad different ways you can reframe it so that you, you know, your mindset can accept it. Um, but, um, I actually spoke to a sleep doctor, um, before I was doing a, um, so I'm like kind of like a local celebrity around here and everything. And I was, um, picked to do, um, some type of, um, fashion model with, um, I don't know, but the doctor was actually a model with me, um, for this, uh, charity event and everything. And, um, I talked to him about it and everything. And he actually said, um, you know, eight hours doesn't work for everybody. And, um, then I, I was, I was studying this stuff and I realized that if you, interrupt a sleep cycle, you act, actually wake up more tired than uh, if you completed an entire sleep cycle. So if they're an hour and a half, um, you know, you can go through uh, four, four hour and a halves to get six. And, and then um, it's going to be tough for you to get your, uh, your, your nine, right? Nine hours might be too sleep, too much sleep. Seven and a half would be perfect. So eight would be waking up in the middle of a cycle. 
Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. So sometimes how you, do you get find what, How do you find what that is, right? Especially it, in the medical field, they say that women need more sleep than men um, historically. And so it's like, well, how do we figure out our, you know, like you said, some, like my husband, he can almost always five to six hours is a good number for him. Yeah. But so you, that, it's, it's just, it's just proven theories. Like I, I read all these books and you know, um, let me, let me, let me let y'all in on a secret. I was the weirdo on the prison yard that would read something in a book and the book said, walk around in the morning and let the, the, the dew from the grass petals touch the bottom of your feet so that you can feel the euphoria of the universe or something. And I had to try it. <laughs> like you literally have to prove theories. <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm saying? So you just have to see if this works for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and if it works with you and if it does and produces a result, then try it again. Um, you know, which is pretty dope. One thing that you mentioned, you mentioned the superhero. Um, it's actually called a superhero concept or a self-concept or, um, or ideal self. So the self-concept is comprised of three things. I actually teach this in, in the Prison of Prosperity. It, it, it's self-esteem, it's your self-image, and it's your ideal self. And in your ideal self, you actually, um, I, I teach you how the, the superhero concept is something that's very important. So I go back to leaning towards um uh optimus prime and incredible hawk um and you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm uh, forced or faced with um some adversity and i'm like hawk smash you know in my subconscious mind this is not going to hold me back because i'm able to give myself you know this command because of you know what it make what it does you know for me you know mentally i'm able to see myself breaking barriers and things like that it is some pretty dope stuff but i get people in my classes in my courses to actually take some time and figure out who you know they they resonated with when they were a child. If that was a princess, if it was a sports player, if it was a superhero, um, Optimus Prime happened to be the leader of the Transformers. I'm a transformation specialist now. I help people transform their mind and their bodies. I mean, it's some pretty dope stuff. It sounds pretty weird, but it actually works for me. And there's a lot of science behind it. So I actually have, you know, the science to back this stuff up. And um, I'm not the traditional guy that's kind of spilling it or you would actually hear it from. So the lived experience actually validates a lot of the information. So being as though I've proven these theories in my life and I have this stuff to back it up, it makes it really cool and believable and adds a lot of value. So I do these talks in, you know, uh, in different corporations. Um, before you guys got on a call, I mentioned how, you know, um, schools, um, I'm not the, the traditional keynote speaker or motivational speaker. Like I get like 10 gigs, 10 dates, you know, with one organization because I teach curriculum based stuff where I have to actually come back and take you through these comprehensive steps. So it's not just a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You, you gotta, you gotta work your way through. You gotta do these practical, you know, conscious living practices and exercises so that the repetition allows you to, to keep it. And that value that I add gives me more opportunities. And like, you see some of this stuff and, you know, I'm messing around, I'm putting it up there, but I'm an ambassador for Lululemon. Uh, I'm a national ambassador for this drink, R7. Um, R7 is Hassan Reddick from the Philadelphia Eagles, one of the highest paid pass rushers in the NFL. And I'm the first ambassador who's not an NFL player. And I also have a minority stake in the company. So be able to add value to people like that you know, under, you know, makes me reinforces the, like, I know the dope stuff that I actually have and how the, the influence that I still have um, and whatever it is that I do. Um, Lululemon is a, is a global brand and I have my picture up in the store. Like, you know I mean? It's pretty dope uh, where you, 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 when you can divorce your story and marry the truth, then the world will change their opinion of you. Like the day after you do. The world will change their opinion of you the day after you do. You just have to divorce your story and marry the truth. We've been, you know, doing things for a long period of time and we've embodied that identity. But I I I continue continuously like change my identity or rewrite it so that I continue to evolve and you know go to where I believe, you know, it, it, I'm destined to be. And uh, you know, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. I've only been home for 10 years. So you know, I'm, I'm, I'm literally just getting started. I have all these different things. Um, like it's pretty dope. Um, 
uh, uh, you guys ever uh, pump, well, in Jersey, you don't pump your own gas, but uh, we pump our own gas out here. And um, when we get out the car to pump our own gas, they actually um, run like ads and different segments and things like that on the gas pump. Um, well, uh, like in February, um, my motivational minutes will actually be on the gas pumps as well. Um, so, you know, I'm continuously to repurpose content and things like that and, and, and just, you know, scale it and take it to different places and actually change and create the narrative for a lot of different people um, because they just don't think outside the box. So I'm able to uh, take this stuff to a lot of different places, man, and believing in it. Well, no, no, Coach Lynch, I want to thank you tonight. Does anybody have a question? Any more questions? Uh, well, I don't really have a question, but I do want to thank you, Coach Lynn, for all your inspiring thoughts and statement today. Um, I think after you mentioned all that in the later end, testing theories, not just from other people's, but also yours as well, because we're all real estate agents, potentially uh, real estate investors here, or already mm -hmm. are, and we all tested our own theories of what works best for us, you know, and I think that's kind of my big key takeaway here and i really do appreciate that so i'm gonna go test a bunch of my theories and see if they work for me right so um i appreciate that so i really want to take that time but I, I do have to jump off so thank you again coach lynn yeah thank you good seeing you thank again thank you man. thank you for joining us next week and right, since yeah. all of you are in real estate um you guys know max maxwell you ever heard of him max maxwell he's in real estate he's pretty big in, in real estate but that's whose house i'm at right now if you Google them when you get off, you'll, you'll, you'll see. But that's where I'm at right now. But I seen, uh, I think Matt had a question too. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the energy drinks. Um, just a few minutes ago, I Googled it. I'm like, what is he drinking? And uh, how does that affect your uh, your schedule, your sleep, work, energy schedule? Um, it's, it's only 120 milligrams of uh, caffeine. Um, so it's, it's, it's not it's a lot. It doesn't, yeah. Um, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, uh, take you up and make you crash. Um, there's no jitters or anything like that. So it's a, a different type of uh, energy. It's a, it's a better for you option um, out there. So it's nothing like um, a, a Red Bull or- um, Yeah, that's this is more. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Five hour energy. like that. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't even okay. um, like endorse it or be involved with it if it wasn't um, something that was um, going to change the game. Uh, you know, I'm just that that type of person. Those are the type of things that I do where we try to uh, disrupt the market with a lot of things that we got going on. Cool. So, Coach, did you actually approach somebody or some company about getting your stuff on the gas pumps or did they just call you? How did that even come about? Nah, I figured that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, um, you know, I'm into marketing and, and things like that because, you know, I have my own company and I'm always, uh, you know, just things catch your eye. Um, uh, back in the day before I went to prison, I had uh, my own store in the, um, in the mall. I used to sell um, fitted hats and um, throwback jerseys and things like that and um, um, basketball jersey, football jerseys and things like that. And in order for me to design that store, I used to just walk around different malls in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and, you know, uh, D.C., Maryland and stuff like that. And whatever would catch my eye, I would actually, you know, figure out how I was going to incorporate that in my own store. You know, I still do things like that um, to this day, whatever um kind of catches my eye i'm kind of intrigued by it and i go and, and kind of check it out so you know um this lady she's always coming on the gas pump when i'm uh getting my gas her name was maria menounos and i started mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. checking out maria menounos like i want to like that would be pretty cool so i already have these segments on the news so i'm thinking about how can i repurpose my segments here i'm, I'm already doing it for this demographic right this is just another way so wherever you're at for a certain period of time, you're being held captive. All right, so this is how, um, you know, I gained the equivalent of, um, of of an advanced college degree. Um, I turned my car into, you know, a mobile uh, university, right? Uh, 300 hours of audio learning, you, you get the equivalent of advanced level college degree. So you're being held captive in your car for this time. So what you do during that time will determine, you know, what you, what you get out of the future, right? So, Listening to audiobooks allowed me to obtain the information that, that I needed to, you know, become a better speaker or to be more versed on a subject or, or whatever, right? So when I get out of the car and I'm pumping this gas, I'm actually being held captive for a few minutes. So I'm like, wow, this is a great place to advertise because the person can't go anywhere. 
right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm seeing these advertisements and I might not agree with a lot of them or I might, it might not resonate with me, but something has grabbed my attention. And I'm the type of person that if you hear my voice or you hear what I'm saying, it's going to grab your attention. And I thought that this would be a great opportunity for me to just test out the theory to see if this would be a good place to promote and market. So, you know, we got a lot, 1200 bucks this month to see if, uh, you know, it was, it was cool. You know what I mean? If we could work. So I just Googled, um, you know, how do you get your stuff on here? And then I, I got somebody to actually do that after I got the link and everything. I approached them with my vision and my, my stuff. So um, I, I've been trying to get, I'm so far ahead of the game. I've been trying to get a sports agent to represent me, um, you know, to get me endorsements and deals and, you know, things like that as the same way they do a, a sports player. And um, these guys are so conditioned to just go after what they normally do that they can't see the upside or just see the reach that I actually have in, you know, these different markets. I mean, I'm everywhere. So those 10 things that I do, our Grambling State University football team, I actually um, do a mindset reset for them after every game. So whether they win, lose, or draw, I get them focused back on the vision and the task at hand. If they stay too long in a loss, they get depressed. If they stay too far in a win and get ahead of themselves, they get anxious, right? The power's always in the now, right? So I got to bring them guys back down. And here they go. Hugh Jackson, who is a former NFL coach, he hires me to come in and do mindset resets for that. And I changed the game because not a lot of player or professional development is uh, not a lot of football players are into or, or, or organizations are into player and professional development. Now, if I can get the agent to say, hey, why don't you add this as a service, right? And I'll do it for free for your roster, and now you can have a one up when you're pitching some of these players to tell them what you do to help them develop their mind and their mindset. And now all you have to do is represent me on the other side and get me other other things. Right. You gave me other deals and I'll do this for your agency for free. It's like pulling teeth. But there's going to be somebody that understands that hears me and then they're going to rock with me and then it's going to change the game. But I have that vision and I'm sticking to it. I'm going to do it with or without them and we're going to make it happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jerry Maguire, it's, right? It's, it's dope. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, Coach, I appreciate you coming on tonight, right? And um, I just want to say thank you everybody here uh, for coming for attending tonight. And I just want to end the recording. But if we can, if you can stay long, Coach Lynch, and we can talk some more, chop it up some more, that'd be great. Once again, welcome again and thank you again for coming on to Financial Independence to Small Multifamily Investing. Uh, see you by next week.